Um, I recorded the previous lecture and we're going to record this one. I'll have both those put up for you guys today so you can go back and if you need to hear this again, you can listen to it again. Because a lot of times we add those extra details that kind of help make sense um, when we're in the moment. But when you're looking at this later, you might need to come back to it. So that, that's available for you guys. And I'll put those up on um, YouTube and get a link going for you uh, sometime today. So today we're going to talk about neurotransmitters. So if you look at the name, right, neuro is neuron brain or neuron, like nervous system, nerves, same root. Transmitter is when you transmit, you send from one to another. So if we break down this word, it literally means to transmit from one neuron to another. So they are chemicals that send signals from one neuron to another. Uh, when we talk about the nervous system, uh, we typically think of electricity, right? Nervous systems, wires that run through our body that send electrical signals from our brain to the rest of our body. But it's a little different. So if we think about like how electric circuits work, it's one continuous line, right? If I cut the wire, the signal stops. So elect the signals that we send in our brain are more a series of wires that are disconnected from another. So the only thing that binds them is um, what we have here with the chemical. So your nervous system uses both electrical and chemical signals to send messages throughout your body. So the electrical signals are sent within a neuron. So they go along the axon. And then they end up at this axon terminal. And this is where chemical signals release. Neurons do not touch each other. They get very, very close, but they don't touch each other. So to send a signal between the neurons, we have little chemical messengers. So the process, these two work together. The signal goes to the end, the axon, and releases these chemicals. They get picked up by the next cell. And then that starts the electrical signal that goes to the end here, which causes chemicals to be released, which is picked up by the next cell, which causes the electrical signal to be sent, so, so on and so forth. So these are how the, how the two were kind of linked together. A lot of us forget about this chemical part when we think about neurons. Okay, here's kind of the process that happens within the cell for sending chemical signals. So the four different phases are labeled here. So one, two, three, and four. So let's kind of go through and see what happens for each of these. Um, this animation here, shows what we see on this slide here. So our electrical signal reaches the end of the neuron, which we call the axon terminal, right? So this is our first impulse, the first electrical signal. Okay, when this signal gets to the end, that lets this cell know it has to release these chemicals, which we call neurotransmitters into this area between the cells. So these chemicals are going to move and they're going to find binding sites. So you can think of these as the key and these little notches are the lock. So these keys open up these channels. So we can see here, this is one that's bound. Here, there's an empty spot. So one of these neurotransmitters may come down and bind in here, which would open this gate up. So when these gates open up, this causes calcium and other things to enter the cell. We saw um, yesterday the sodium and potassium when they moved we saw electricity be generated along the surface of the cell. 
So the same idea happens at the ends. So the simple way to think about it, electrical signal gets to the end, it releases chemicals. Those chemicals bind, which cause electricity to go on the next cell. So it's electrical, chemical, electrical. Does anyone have any questions so far on um, kind of what we're taking a look at? Because I know there's a lot of inf um, additional information that are on these here, but we just kind of want to focus on those four main steps. Electrical signal releases neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters bind and cause electrical signals. Okay, um, so let's look at an animation of this and we wanna to try to identify what, what's going on in this case. So I want you guys to take um, a minute or so, read through this. So we'll read through it together and I want you guys to read through it on your own. So neurotransmitters are chemicals that are released by neurons at the axon terminal of one neuron and received by the dendrites of another neuron. So neural transmitters are chemicals that are released. So what's being released are our neurotransmitters. They're being released by or released from our axon terminal and they're received by the dendrites of the other neuron. So for this, our goal is uh, in this blank area here, I want you to type in what part of this diagram. So is it this big light blue cell? Is it the tiny red circles, the dark blue circles, the light pink cell underneath? So what in this diagram represents the axon terminal, our neurotransmitters and our dendrites? So I want you guys to take a few minutes on this and uh, we'll check in and see how we do. Let's go and take a look at this. Um, our axon terminal is going to be our light blue region. Because this is where our neurotransmitters are released. They say the neurotransmitters are chemicals that are released by the axon terminal. So this one here is letting them go into the space before between it, right? So this would be our axon terminal. Our neurotransmitters are these red circles that move into the space. Or if you said pink dots, that's fine. It's another way to look at it. Down here, this would be our cell that receives these neurotransmitters. So the dendrites are going to be the pink cell. So our, in this image here, we have our This is going to be our um, axon terminal. It is this one here? Our dendrites are going to be below it. And then our neurotransmitters are going to be these ones here. So this would be, oops. Yeah. These here would be our neurotransmitters. So we have our neurotransmitters. Yeah. So the yellow dots in this case, um, we have 
So there's a couple other things. We can see that there's like that yellow lightning bolt would be the um, electrical signal. And the blue ones are, um, we're not gonna get, we don't need to get that far into detail, um, but these are like we saw yesterday, the ions that move in and create the charge. So what I want you guys to focus on today is this basic idea, right? One neuron, the end of a neuron, the axon terminal, releases chemicals called neurotransmitters into the space between neurons. Those neurotransmitters are picked up by the next neurons, dendrites, and cause the signal to continue. So we have electrical signal release binds causes electrical signal. So electrical signal releases neurotransmitters, binds and causes an electrical signal. There's a little more to it, but if you understand that basics, those basics, um, it, you know how neurons work. The why and how is a little bit more, um, but just the basics of it, that's like, a, just I said, um, electrical signal causes these to be released. They bind and cause another electrical signal. Okay. So uh, first, this looks crazy. What are we looking at, right? Um, we have the structures of neurotransmitters. So these are our neurotransmitters. Look at these things. Um, so what I want you to do is just look at the names, adrenaline, noradrenaline, dopamine, serotonin, GABA, acetylcholine, glutamate, endorphins. Um, are there any of those terms um, that you guys have heard before? Have you heard of any of these neurotransmitters? So these are chemicals, yeah, these are chemicals that are released by our brain, awesome. So what are some that we um, may have heard of before? Because some of these things we talk about in our daily lives like are, that aren't kind of limited, right? Adrenaline, right? Yeah, um, your adrenaline's pumping. Dopamine, right? Dopamine, you may hear um, when we talk about addiction. Psychology, yeah. Dopamine is that pleasure center, center right? Dopamine is what lets you, um, what gives you those feelings of pleasure. And when you become addicted, um, your brain like um, becomes numb to this flood of dopamine that you get. Uh, serotonin, serotonin is your happy hormone. Or happy neurotransmitter, I should say. Um, so hormones, I misspoke, right? These are neurotransmitters. Uh, hormones are a little bit different because they act on um, different cells that are, hormones can act on your brain and they do, but they can also act on other um, types of cells. So neurotransmitters only really act on other neurons but kind of like hormones, like testosterone causes big changes in your body. Um, same with estrogen. Uh, the neurotransmitters cause big change when we have a lot of them. And that's a, that's a good distinction. Yeah, that's good. You have a question? All right, um, so a little bit later today, uh, I'm going to ask you guys to, uh, well, actually, let's take a look at it now. Um, one of the lecture questions for today is for you to describe a typical day in your life and identify six neurotransmitters that like are being released. So during your day, what are six different neurotransmitters that you may release. So we're kind of looking at what scenarios do that. <clears throat> so when you're doing that activity, kind of look at the little descriptions down here, look at the titles and uh, see when those things may 
happen. Okay, um, <clears throat> so we're going to get to the um, next couple parts. So the next couple parts are going to be focusing on um, this this process where we have yeah, dopamine. Yeah, so dopamine because some things make pleasure excite you. So yeah, for example, if you say um, uh, watching my favorite TV show, I get a flood of dopamine, right? I get a flood of my uh, uh, pleasure hormone. So that'll be one way that you could describe like how these hormones affect your life. Okay, um, so for this slide here, uh, what we're gonna have you do is I want you to go through and I want you to summarize what are the different, what's happening in this GIF here or GIF. So I want you guys to break it down into um, at least three parts. Describe what's happening in this cell, what's happening in between, and what's happening over here. So I want you guys to kind of summarize this process, right? What are we looking at? Try to be as thorough as you can. And then we'll, we'll try to break down what's going on in terms of chemical and electrical. Good, good, yeah. So one thing to note too, when we're looking at this, notice what happens to the neurotransmitters afterwards, right? They go, they bind, they cause an electrical signal. But they get pumped back in Okay, um, so let's uh, let's go and take a look at this uh, so we can move on. Um, that way we get a chance to um, talk about the last kind of big idea. Um, so here we have electrical signals and we have chemical signals. So in our diagram here, right, how would we describe the electrical signals? Where are they being, um, where are they being transmitted?
so let's look at this way, right? Are, are the electrical signals, are they on the cells or are they between the cells? Because we looked at, that's what we saw before, right? Electrical signals versus chemical, right? We saw electrical signals go along the cell. Chemical signals go between the cells, between the neurons. So electrical signals are traveling along the outside of the neurons. And our chemical signals signals travel between the neurons. So um, we'd see electrical, right? Electrical, chemical, electrical. <clears throat> okay, um, so the last thing that we're gonna look at, and we saw this here, right? Notice at the end of the cycle, uh, we need all of these neurotransmitters, which are in the center, end up getting taken back by the cell where they're released. So it's kind of like resetting, right? So if you think of like a mouse trap, right? A mouse trap, um, after it goes off, you have to reset it for it to happen again. So that's kind of what happens with the neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters need to be cleared by the space before they can be sent, a signal can be sent again. So we have to reset the switch in order for it to get another signal. Because if these receptors already have something on them, they can't get more, right? If something's already stimulated, if you turn on a light switch, you can't, um, another way of thinking of it is like, um, like Morse code. Morse code's the, the dots and dashes, right? Like D, 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 D. Like um, you need to, if you just have one long, beep, it's not going to give you any information, right? You need to turn things on and off to send those signals. And that's how these work. Um, you need to make sure that you clear the space so you can send another signal. So when we're looking at this, um, this is kind of our basic idea, right? In order for a signal to be sent, these molecules have to be released So they have to be released. They have to bind to the receptor. And then they have to be removed and cleared away. So these are kind of the three things that can go wrong. So if these aren't released at all, we can't get a signal. If they get destroyed on the way so that they can't bind here, we don't have a signal. Or what's even worse, if they get stuck so if they just stick to here, we have it so that it doesn't get a signal as well. So these are kind of our three things that can happen. They can get stuck, they can get stuck on the receptors. So this causes the neuron to fire once and stop. They can get destroyed along the way which makes it so that we never see, if these get destroyed along the way, they're not gonna be able to bind to the receptor. And lastly, we can get it so that these don't get released at all. So these are problems that can happen along the way. So it cannot be released. It can be destroyed while it's getting to the receptor or it can become stuck. And so we're going to look at these three different types uh, together in um, a couple different statements here. So uh, for the next couple slides, what we're trying to do is we're trying to see 
which of these cases, what are some problems that can happen between your neurotransmitters? So uh, one of the first problems that can happen um, or ways that we can solve it is uh, through the use of, say, antidepressants. So we'll go ahead and read through this and I'll, I'll explain the directions on what you want to do with this here, because at first it may seem a little odd, but uh, I'll, I'll explain what we're doing here. So medicines called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So they prefer SSRIs, right? Block the reuptake of the neurotransmitter serotonin. So when we say block reuptake, we're preventing these, we're preventing these um, channels here to take the serotonin back. If we look, serotonin is the mood transmitter. So it contributes to our well-being and happiness. So our serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, block the reuptake of serotonin. So what does that mean, right? Um, the blocking action increases the amount of serotonin in synaptic, synaptic cleft, a synaptic cleft, so this area here, uh, which prolongs the effects. So the blocking action increases the amount of serotonin. Um, some scientists hypothesize that decreased levels of serotonin in the brain are linked to clinical depression. So these medications help treat that depression or anxiety. Um, so there was a question. So the block is like Morse code or something like that. When we talk about the Morse code, it's um, you have to start and stop the signals. So the, the fact that when we take back this, we start another signal. So it has to kind of reset after each time it fires. All right, um, so for down here, um, our question, they're asking us to um, complete the sentence by filling in the blanks. So we have two blank spots that we need to replace and picking the correct answers from the parentheses. So our job, we wanna fill in these two blanks and then either write increase or decrease. So we're gonna rewrite this sentence completing the blanks and picking increase or decrease to describe what's going on. So we'll take a few minutes on this and um, see what you guys come up with. And then we'll, we'll go over it together.
so let's uh let's take a look um so i think most of this is kind of described in this area right here So when we have uh, these inhibitors, what they do is they prevent serotonin from going away. So if it doesn't go away, it's stuck in a spot. So we can say it, it increases. So what we can do to your, we can just kind of copy this over and just replace. So it causes the amount of serotonin to increase. And these are what we call antidepressants. So that's what they're more commonly called. Or they're prescribed for anxiety too. So antidepressants or anti-anxiety pills would work. Yeah, no problem. So one of the big things for this too, right? We, we don't need to go into all of those, um, like to be able to answer these questions, you don't need to be able to um, decode and read all of this information. Um, we're just kind of picking out the important info. So in terms of what we need to know, is that antidepressants increase the amount of serotonin, right? Serotonin is your happy neurotransmitter, one that makes you feel better. So if you have more serotonin, it increases those happy like relays to work. I did. Uh, close in months. Oh, nice. Awesome. Good call. Thank you, sir. So um, what we're going to have you guys do for the rest of the period and tonight, um, the tetanus one's going to be pretty similar to that. <laughs> nice. Um, and botulism is going to be, um, you're just answering a question based off of what's one, um, oh, what's it, I forgot. Should they say what one way that is different? Um, what I want you to do is uh, go to slide 12, if you could, and make sure you get this corrected here. Uh, it should be what is one way that's different. Rest of these, you guys should be able to answer on your own. Um, tetanus and botulism are pretty cool. Interesting. Uh, tetanus, uh, tetanus is an extremely deadly disease, but no one dies from it, which is kind of odd, right? It's really deadly, but no one dies from it. Um, main reason is we have vaccines, so you can get a tetanus shot that prevents it. And uh, botulism, botulism, thankfully, we don't really have too much anymore because um, our tin cans and food are a lot sealed. Yeah, tetanus, you're absolutely right. You do get lockjaw. So they, they mention it here. Tetanus is where your muscles get like um, locked up. Um, you get your shots. You, usually you get your tetanus shots when you um, get your like vaccines, like your measles, mumps, rubella. Tetanus, they say to get every 10 years or so. So I think all of us, um, well, all of you guys are due for you usually get another shot 
towards the end of high school. Uh, I know I got mine, the meningitis shot, which actually we talked about before. Meningitis is where your brain gets inflamed. Uh, but you usually get a tetanus shot every 10 years. So if you go to the doctor's office, every once in a while, they'll ask, like, when was the last time you got your tetanus shot? And they'll, they'll give you one. Um, and then botulism is something that we don't really have to worry too much about anymore. Uh, this was stuff that, um, like old, old tin cans, they did a really bad job of preventing food from spoiling. So the rest of this info you guys should be able to get through tonight. Um, I'm going to post this video along with the other one in case you need to go back and look at the lecture notes. But um, yeah, thank you guys for participating and um, going on in the chat.